I recently traveled to Dongguan, located in southern China, just north of Hong Kong, to document a promising new cancer therapy being sought by many Westerners, including Americans. Like anything, how is China perceived from the outside world? It's kind of like, how is Texas perceived from the outside world? I think everybody is rocking around with guns in their holsters and, you know, it's... When I do tell people I go to China for treatment, a lot of them are like, what? They're doing advanced cancer treatment over there? And it's like, well, there's a specific oncologist that is doing that. He happens to be in China. Once we got here to China, um, we realized that we were walking into a state-of-the-art uh, facility. At, um, you know, and, and it was interesting because a lot of people back home were also thinking I was coming here and heading up into the, into the hills and, and uh, going to do some sort of a uh, weird and wonderful treatment, um, you know, it was just that preconceived notion that, uh, you know, you're heading to another country for treatment. This is Dr. Wong, a board-certified oncologist in China who also trained at MD Anderson Cancer Center in the United States. The therapy he administers is called Sonophotodynamic Therapy, or SPDT for short. SPDT, Sonophotodynamic Therapy. So the sono portion of that uh, represents the ultrasound waves. You are basically taking a, a sensitizer, a sono sensitizer, which is a green chlorophyll liquid in a small tube. And um, you're also taking that along with the photo sensitizer for the light portion of the treatment. For uh, two days, you are sitting in your room with the curtains drawn, so you're not exposed to light and you are putting three drops of this sensitizer under your tongue and then you're shutting your mouth and then you're waiting three to five minutes for that to absorb under the tongue and then you repeat. This is your life for two days. <laughs> so it is a bit of a tedious process. It's not painful, it's just a bit boring. So um, you're not allowed to go outside or be exposed to light, otherwise it will activate the photosensitizer. And, uh, and what the sensitizer is, you've got one for the photodynamic therapy and one for the uh, sonodynamic therapy. Particularly what they do is they stay attached to, the, um, to the, uh, the cancer cells. Away from any healthy cells. And that's what's so beautiful about the treatment is that the effect on healthy cells is pretty much nil. And then you start three days of um, the SPDT treatment and that takes about two hours. The first phase you do is the photodynamic therapy which basically entails you laying on a, uh, a light bed. It has infrared light uh, coming up from all sides. So you get in it and it just shuts down and you have these light beams coming up from all directions. So you lay on your back for 15 minutes and then you flip over, you lay on your stomach for 15 minutes, and that's it. So once you're done with light bed, uh, you go into a room that has a large tub. Uh, the tub is filled with water, and it has ultrasound transducers. I'm not sure how many. You're in the bath, and uh, you're actually uh, you're basically lying up to your up to your na uh, nasal passage in uh, in water. What the electrodes are doing is actually targeting the tumor cells, and um, so the sensitizers are attached to all the tumor cells right throughout the body, and uh, and targeting uh, anything that's metastasizing and anything that's spreading through the body. So, uh, the total of 30 minutes on the light bed, 15 and 15. Total of 40 minutes in the bath, 20 20, uh, and then that's that's the treatment for the day. So if you're getting chemo, then you're usually, you know, that's the afternoon. You're kind of getting your, your IVs and, and everything that's happening in the afternoon. Uh, then you go to day two, same thing. Day three, same thing. And then you get a day off, and then you start your second week. Um, it's a full body treatment, more or less, um, that, you're, that you're achieving, uh, which is great. And uh, it's... Uh, um, it's not it's non evasive. It's not. Um, it's it's uh, you, you basically um, uh, you know after after you've finished the treatment, you're a little bit lethargic, a little bit tired because it works. You know it, it exhumes the oxygen from your body. So uh, they give you an ozone treatment prior to going into the um, into the treatment, so that your your body can handle it. And um, when you come back into the room, you also have a uh, have some ozone treatment as well as some oxygen, just to just to give you that little bit of a boost back. So. Um, 
but in general, it's a, it's a, uh, it's quite, it's quite relaxing to be honest with you, and uh, and therapeutic. So, uh, yeah. And yeah, so that's basically the the, the treatment. Um, like I said, painless and and really just unique in itself. It should be emphasized that this form of SPDT is not affiliated with any other SPDT program in the world. The original form of PDT, the photodynamic portion, was first used to treat skin cancer in 1904. Research on SDT, or sonodynamic therapy, started in 1989. However, a proprietary form of its combination, SPDT, has been utilized by Dr. Wong and his oncology team in a clinical setting since 2005. What makes Dr. Wong's approach unique is its proprietary American-made sensitizers, the first whole-body STD equipment in the world, along with its careful integration with traditional cancer therapies. Publications related to Dr. Wong's therapy can be found on PubMed, illustrating how photodynamic therapy is an established therapeutic method, first approved by the FDA for certain cancers in 1998, with increasing data to show that sonodynamic therapy shows promise, especially when used in combination as SPDT along with conventional therapies. For the breast cancer patients included in this article, all had significant partial or complete responses to this combination therapy after they had ultimately failed to respond to previous conventional therapy alone. This groundbreaking new approach, along with Dr. Wong's 35 years of clinical experience treating cancer, makes for an exciting option for cancer patients seeking new alternatives. I had done the research on SPDT. My brother, who's a doctor uh, back in Texas, had done the research with me. And my brother said, let's go, let's do it. And it just felt really right. The process of getting here was, was uh, unbelievable. Once, we, uh, once we'd made the communication with Lucy, uh, she actually sent us all the information we required. She actually also sent us a letter um, stating what we were coming here to do. So um, we were able to go down to the um, Chinese consulate in Melbourne and uh, put in our application. And uh, we were able to get a rushed visa. And in a matter of uh, 48 hours, we had the visa in our hands. Uh, my experience so far has been fantastic. Like um, the moment that we turned up, uh, we had uh, an interpreter at the airport picking us up at the airport, and um, they they've given us um, every bit of direction that we require. And um, we've been introduced to all the doctors. Uh, so all the doctors, they all come in together. They, they they all know what's going on. All the nurses come in together. Um, so everyone knows what's happening. Um, their, their attention to detail is, is A1, uh, they really do look after you. You know, everything they do is, uh, is just attention to detail. The actual hospital itself is only about seven years old, so it's very clean, you know, very new. Uh, the rooms that you're in are actually more like a, living in a flat because you have all the cooking facilities that you need. Um, uh, you have your own, you know, your own restroom and refrigerator and filtered water, and so you really have all the amenities you need. The biggest difference of uh, being a patient in a hospital like this is, and this is standard for China, is that you do your own grocery shop and you do your own cooking, because that's what the Chinese families do. They support the patient in that way, and the hospitals don't provide that. So um, that's why a lot of people come with support people. Um, if they're a little bit too weak, to have that energy to go out and shop and cook themselves and it is important that they consider that when they consider coming over that they, they may need a support person to help them in that capacity.